America has mommy issues, big time. Fantasizing about the old mother country, especially Ireland. By the way, I bet you thought this was Ireland behind me, didn't you? Because you've never actually been to these islands. This is Scotland. Hi, this is Ben Twell, and today I want to explain to you why Americans are not Irish. I know that's a bit complicated and a bit controversial. So let me break it down for you, Irish American and Irish. These are two separate things. First of all, why? I'm gonna show you some clips from some films here. But first, you have someone in Ireland and they're Irish. They can't be anything else. But if you say that you're Irish American, you can say that you're American and you can drop the Irish bit. It's optional. For you to be that Irish, truly, that, that, that cannot be optional. It has to be a medium. But if you're in Ireland and that's a culture, then that's the medium of the culture all around you. The news, the, the pubs, the, the streets. It's not something that you think about. An Irish American, that's fine. Please respect your heritage. That's beautiful. As is Italian American, African American. But these things are different and I'm gonna show you why. I'll come back to that Irish American bit, but let me show you some film clips. The first one here is from Far and Away, a film from 1992. One of my favorites from that genre of pseudo-Celtic Americana. Have a look. Mystical. So what you get just from the opening scene there is that, and the title, this is something distant, it's far. We are removed from it. The views are approaching it, not leaving it. And if I was going to show someone Wales, where I am, I wouldn't begin by going through a mystical coast with strange music like that, kind of fairy tale music. I would begin, or where I'm from originally in Texas, I would begin with something truthful, something you can feel, something that reflects an actual lived experience. Now, let's go forward in this film and see what else we find here. Here's the old village of the old mother country with all the characters. He even got the stereotypical hat, the donkey, the people coddling chickens, and the familiar people. Everything's rustic. Now I do realize this is entertainment and it's a, a great story. Far and Away is one of the great American epics. But what you get here from that little village scene is a theme park. Or a bit more valuable than that, I'd say a collection of grandparents, how they saw Ireland. It's how Americans view the Irish. It's not how the Irish view themselves. And there's a marked difference there. And that's really what defines Irish American as opposed to Irish. And part of that, I mean, it goes down into the accents. I want to show you this, this bit here. Not just the accent, but notice what he's saying. Why can't you say it, Shannon? Why can't you say you like my hat? Why can't you say you like my suit? I've earned this! I've... It's epic, far and away. I mean, it's a long film, and it, it begins in Ireland and then transgresses to Boston and the, the immigrant experience and the, the workhouses and the, the, the saloons there and then going out west to state claim in line. It is a really great experience, but it's not in values. It's not Irish. That, look at my suit, look at my hat, you know, in that funny accent. It's not Irish accent, of course, but that go and get it, get aspiration, own property. That's the American dream going on there. That's charged with that sentiment. And it's, it's trying to fuse it with Irishness. But when you fuse something, you lose the ability to just call it Irish. I'm not saying you don't create something new. You absolutely do, and that's beautiful in a way. Except when it goes a bit too far and becomes characterized by gangster mafia violence which is what a lot of Irish American culture is now. Have a look at this clip from the Boondock Saints. Just a small image here. Sword. And my hand takes hold on judgment. Here they are praying very I will take peace. A couple of guys here. We've got the 
but there is another, another Mary tattoos I going on and the Catholicism is steeped in it that Irish American Catholicism but then they leave that and become the caricature of this kind of bad smoky hero and these guys who were at the beginning of are very pious you saw the them taking the rosemaries and putting them back in their jacket the beads and you go from that and then later in the film look look at this and then look at it i mean they're shooting an angel killing an angel a symbol of their own religion that juxtaposition there is, is, is mad so that cross between being very pious earlier on in the film and then just outright killing people and having a gunfight and having an angel shot to pieces it's not Irish certainly and there's a lot of this in our culture that there's a connection to violence through Irishness and if you've ever met many Irish people they're not really violent they're nice people so and I know it's Hollywood and it's entertainment but there's a danger of getting lost in this Hollywood view of what Irish is and not actually engaging with the Irish culture of today Ireland is certainly not the only old mother country we do this with I have some Scottish ancestry and I got hooked into the idea of Highlander as a kid and just look at these couple of clips from Highlander and you'll get what I mean. Lose your temper. The film Highlander is insane for this. You have a Christopher Lambert who's a Frenchman who's pretending to be Scottish who is being taught by a Spaniard who is actually Scottish and then his arch enemy is a Russian ancient Russian guy who's the only actual American of the main characters. I mean, that is some serious identity mommy issue psychosis going on with American culture. For those of us who are from America, even if we live over here in Europe and Wales like I do, our culture has a serious complexity with not actually understanding the roots of our own culture and how what we think it is is vastly different from what the cultures are and that they themselves, Ireland or Scotland or Poland, whatever, they have continued growing and changing. Whereas the memories of our grandparents, those have not changed. And we're still trying to define, especially Ireland, according to the memories of people who lived over there maybe a hundred years ago. One thing that really gets up my backside when Irish Americans try and be so Irish that it's really quite embarrassing is language. Just putting a slantia above a bar doesn't make it Irish. And a lot of you who have come to this channel before come here because I talk about language. But if you haven't yet, well here's three words. I'm giving you three words in Irish. The first of those is Leostal which is the Irish word for to subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. Another thing that people just slap onto, even things like notebooks and pint glasses just to say it's Irish, is a harp. Now that's not fair, because what if I was Spanish, right? And I said, well, I'll just slap a guitar and everything. It's Spanish now. And I get the fact that music and literary tradition is a part of Irishness. And I respect that. But you don't own a musical instrument. By the way, the Irish word for harp, Cleishach. And the Welsh word for harp, Telen. Cleishach. It's a bit superficial, and I get every country has national symbols, and fair enough. It's part of it, but there's a lot more to a country. That Speaking of things that Ireland is recognized by, the name Brian. Now what this means is high and noble, and it's related to the Cornish word bre, which is a kind of hill, and it meant that in older Welsh as well, and older Irish. And it's related to lots of words throughout the Celtic language, like bri in Welsh is fame or renown. But the thing about Brian is, and language, is it's not just Irish. This is a Breton name as well and Lusatan. It's a French last name as well. 
it's not specifically Irish. Brian does have Irish connotations, absolutely, and rightly so. But it's not confined to it. It doesn't monopolize it. It doesn't own it. In the 12th century, after the Breton had come in to England during the Norman invasion, Brian became an immensely popular name in East Anglia. And the Scandinavians who had been in Ireland took that name as their own and spread it to southern Scotland, North England, and Iceland where the spellings changed. So be aware that a lot of these names that you just assume are Irish are not going to actually just be Irish. They're spread apart a lot of Northwestern Europe in general. But how did the name Brian spread in Ireland? Well, it did have that fame and noble lineage connotation. There was a king named Brian Baru, a king in the 10th and 11th centuries who established a pretty large dominion over Ireland and became High King of Ireland. And if you want to know that story, let me know down in the comment. Language is important, and for the Irish in America, many of them look to the Boston accents, which as we've seen in the films, it's, it's a bit shallow. The Irish haven't been a majority in places like Boston for quite a while, even though they are a significant population, and I do respect the Irish-American sense in that regard. It is a big part of America, though the German-American tradition is in fact much larger. I'm part German, thank you. Hit that like button. In this regard of language, the Canadians to the north have much deeper claim over continuation from Ireland and Scotland for that matter than Americans do. Because when you come to a country and you maintain a group which speaks the same language over generations, that's not the same language of the new nation that you're in, that I could say, yeah, you're Irish in that case. You're Scottish. You're still holding on to a language. And if you go north to Canada, you have an area, Cape Breton, which a couple thousand people speak Scottish Gaelic. And this has persisted from the 1770s. A bit further north, you had Newfoundland, and there were Irish-speaking communities on this land at Mass until relatively recently. And that's quite significant. And that cultural memory really does retain itself. And the Canadians have something really interesting, which America doesn't. They have a Gaeltacht, or they're trying to create one. A Gaeltacht is, well, through Ireland, especially in the West, you have areas where Irish is the supposed to be de facto language. It doesn't work as well as we'd hope, but hopefully reformers will get it there. In any case, it's a place in Canada, in Ontario, where you can go and speak Irish. You don't have that in America. Yes, the people in Ireland, the majority of them day to day, aren't going to speak Irish. Fair enough. But I don't care who or what country you're from and you live in America. If you're from Russia and you're growing up and in your four walls every day after school, it's Russia, man. Then, you know what? That kid, though he didn't grow up in Russia, that kid's Russian. And you might, you might, as a stretch of the imagination, be able to put that to your grandson if when you're at home and in those four walls, it's Russia all the time not America. If you can do that in Irish, in America, you're Irish. But if in your four walls it's America too, then that's different. Then you might say, well, what about the Latinos and the Jews? Well, that's different. The border crossed the Latinos. They didn't cross the border. There's place names throughout, you know, Texas, New Mexico, California, Utah, all of that, that are Spanish. The language is around you. The culture's always been there. Well, since the Spanish came in, of course. There's a consistency. With Jews, there's something called Jewish law and a seriously strict religion that you have to hold on to, and Hebrew has always been a part of that. So to hold on to Irish, you're going to have to hold on to something a bit more solid than folk memory of your grandparents. I'm f***ing Irish. I'll deal with something being wrong for the rest of my life. So don't get me wrong, you have, I mean, I've mentioned Boston. Boston was, you have different periods in its history when it's on the verge of being majority or even majority in some cases, Irish. 1870, it was about one fifth Irish before another wave. And that's absolutely a part of its history. But even when you're one fifth of a major city, that does not make 
that city even Irish. It certainly is Irish American and I think you should be very proud of that. I know I keep going back to Boston, but that's another cliche. And you get the Boston, I'm not gonna pronounce it Celtic. Oh, I just did. It's Celtic, come on, two C's. It's pronounced C at the end. Celtic. Celtic is so much more than just Irish, as I mentioned in my last video. Our shared past is different to our shared present. We've had two revolutions, if we're talking in an Irish-American sense. You've had the American Revolution, and you've had the Irish Revolution, or War of Independence. Take the story of Rip Van Winkle, and yes, that's a Dutch name, and that's the key point is that this man fell asleep before the American Revolution and then woke up like 20 years later and his whole society had changed. The calm Dutch America was gone and the European sleepy hollow type America was destroyed. The roots of American society had been ripped out and a new frenzied pace had taken over society. And then at the other end of the spectrum, today's Ireland, has gone through a revolution in its own past, which the revolutionary Americans who were there and kept on, and even the Irish who went there in 1890, never went through. These are two big, important pillars in history that are not a shared experience between them. Should we celebrate Irishness in America? Absolutely, but it makes you something far more unique, actually. Calling yourself Irish is belittling. The experience that has created you, you get to be a fusion of cultures because you go to America and stay there and you voluntarily chose to not live in Ireland today. And that present experience of Ireland that has continued to change and evolve and grow, producing new music and films, new acts in its own language as well. The Gloaming is a great band which has sung in Irish, it's still growing. It's not fossilized in time, in the time of our grandparents. It's grown without us. Now, if you're a first generation immigrant from Ireland, yeah. If your parents, both your parents grew up in Ireland, I'm not gonna debate you, you're Irish. But if it's carrying on down the generations, your whole life is through the English language in another country, I'm not gonna consider you Irish. You're Irish American in my opinion. I know that offended some of you, I'm sorry. So if you enjoyed this, hey, tap that like button. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.